are Goblin Hewers, any good in patch 5.0? I didn't know what to make of this unit at first. Now, praise the ancestors, Malachi's madness is genius. The rest of this video is explaining why. Reprint for 1000 gold and 250 upkeep, which is heavily modified under Malachi. This gets you 4 Goblin Hewers, each with 10 Slayers as crew, and this will become very important. The health given is 6,420 split between these four entities, so the pieces are far hardier than usual, but this stat card is going to be very confused, so we'll just have to live with it. Armor is listed as 0, with a missile parry chance of 30 from the front. Spell resistance is 35, leadership is 100 and unbreakable. Speed is 40. This is not a typo, the Slayers run like the wind with the Hewer, and they are not afflicted with a cannot run status like most artillery in the game. Melee attack begins at 38, with an attack interval of 4.3 and no splash damage, so we are clearly seeing the stats of the Slayer crew. Melee defense is given as 32, with weapon strength 48, a familiar number, split between base 32, armor piercing 16, and a bonus versus large of 24. Charge bonus is 26, and with the artillery, mass is given as 2000, which in no way stops a crew from being sent flying by a dread saurian to the face. Stay tuned, that happens in this video. For ranged attack, ammunition comes in at 4 volleys, therefore the ammo would have to be boosted past 25% for any increase, but you can use restock with these units. Restock restores a percentage, so it's not going to be that much of a help, but considering the power of the volleys... Range is 80, and this is going to come in as the biggest criticism of the unit. In fact, there's an entire Reddit thread on content creators underplaying the Goblin Hewer. What's my excuse? My Malachi campaign got bogged down, I didn't even know you could have two adventures running at once, and I hadn't actually used the Goblin Cure, since the cannons with Grapeshot are actually pretty good, although no longer overpowered in 5.0.3, which is okay. Their good balance is cool. Yin and Yang, baby. So I hadn't seen the true power of the Goblin Cure until now. Missile damage is listed on this card as an infinity, which is not literally true. But in my first Malachi battle, I saw it given as 4.9 thousand. Let's just say it's high. Be warned, there will be math. See, Malachi figured that since the solution to a goblin is an axe, the solution to a thousand goblins is a lot of axes. Each axe fired inflicts 6 base damage and 26 armor piercing as hurled with the force of artillery, with a bonus versus large of 10. There is no 2 hit number with ranged, but the bonus sure applies to damage. This means that the Goblin Hewer is actually less effective on goblins than erasing trolls, arachnorok spiders, giants, and huge dinosaurs from existence, unless it's Grom the Paunch. So, you fire 38 axes per volley per surviving launcher. This is where the power of the unit comes from. This card has a bug since reload time is 4.0 by default, no doubt why the missile strength is giving infinity and beyond. Total accuracy is given as 20, and this value rises with unit experience, modifying the total accuracy of the shots. Calibration distance is given as 50, so the axes are especially accurate at, let's say, 40 meters, but that's also danger close. Calibration area is given as 8, so there is considerable drift, and this is meant to blanket the broadside of a Dread Saurian, not to erase a Goblin Shaman on foot. There is a penetration listing, but it's given as small, with a max number of extra targets penetrated of 2. And given the arc of the shots, we should not especially rely on this part of the onslaught. Oh, it exists, it's just not reliable. The Goblin Hewer is considered a siege attacker, is unbreakable, immune to weapon strength reduction, and somehow can hide in forests, which is not a trivial issue whatsoever. Also note that the Goblin Hewer has no power to damage city walls, towers, or outer gates despite being considered a siege attacker. Now as opposed to let's say Slayer Pirates, in the red line, the Goblin Hewer is modified by Tactician, adding plus 20% ammunition and plus 8% missile strength at 3 pips, and Morgrim's Favor gives ranked 7 Goblin Hewers, somehow surviving and ranking up from all the carnage. Rants ammunition plus 20%, Missile Strength plus 12%, which certainly won't hurt you but will hurt your foes, and Reload Time Reduction of 10%. I'm not sure it actually goes below 4, but it doesn't throw the 38 axes all at once either, just that probably isn't affected by the stat. In the Tech Tree, Large Scale Shell Production adds another plus 20% for Ammunition, and another plus 10% for Missile Strength. Now above 50%, we're going to see meaningful breakpoints for the Ammunition Supply. 
Field engineers went another 10% reload time reduction, but that's of little concern. On the other hand, artillery entrenchment, granting 15% missile resistance and immunity to flanking, suddenly becomes far, far more important for the Slayer crew of 40 brave combatants than any other artillery crew in the faction, because you do expect to stick them in melee after their initial job is done, or at least to have that option if you do not have the luxury of holding back for the next battle. So how do you use Goblin Heroes? Now, I had no idea how to use a single one with Malachi at first. I was besieging a tier 4 Chaos Dwarf Tower. I couldn't hit walls or towers, the arc over wall seemed suspect, I just had no idea what it was for. And then I saw the 4.9k missile damage and thought, this bore more research later. Apparently this is a personal Malachi invention in lore and only existed in tabletop as a regiment of renown, but we can get a regular version. It counts as artillery, so he boosts that. Well, Malachi's ridiculousness deserves a separate video, and someday you'll get one. Point being, this unit has a few main features. First, it zips around the battlefield far faster than virtually any dwarf infantry except Slayers, so it is perfect for repositioning and getting good angles of attack. Second, since it is artillery, Honey Badger Goblin Hewer don't care about your shields, important for dealing with Chosen and Phoenix Guard, and so on. Third, since it has anti-large anyway, you can use one, especially in conjunction with the right heroes, to decimate even heavy cavalry on the flanks and take out the kind of targets that dwarfs traditionally had no answer for. Well, until the gyrocopter changes. So I grant, for battle longevity, the base gyrocopter is going to be your go-to choice, but for short-term annihilation, the hewer will always be far on top. So really, this unit is spectacular with proper hero support either to slow enemies down and get those cavalry and monster kills, or to resupply, or use flash bomb, the list goes on. They can already do all their worth in a battle in the first half minute of the engagement, or so it seems. After? Well, you still have 40 slayers hungry for battle and actually competent at it. So two of these crews can combine into one unit of wrecking ball slayers, and are still entirely fine smacking anything that isn't hilariously heavily armored. I mean, armor was what the artillery was for. If there's anything of that left, you have only yourself to blame. Despite the chip damage issue, the regular Slayers aren't exactly awful at hewing goblins the old-fashioned way face-to-face -face either. They'll just be extra helpful if Centagores show up, and whatnot. At that point, it would be nice to still have an army to dilute the damage, or else those oaths will be fulfilled somewhat involuntarily. I mean, 40 speed, if no one sees you moving, is enough to actually pop up behind some armies and slaughter something high value, and then drop the equipment and charge into their artillery and slaughter that too. That's the good way of doing the whole Slayer thing, isn't it? The point is that the shortness of the range means that you either set elaborate traps for the enemy, which works when you have an opponent with insufficient range to deal with you, or you use a mix of heavy aggression and cunning to create situations where you can use that missile strength productively then save the crew for a good fight late in that battle. Well, failing that you have an incredibly powerful reserve in case a Vargeist unit shows up out of nowhere. If you're asking, why would I ever use a Goblin Hewer if cannons work so well, especially with Malachi? Well, I've lived that one. Cannons don't get a damage boost from a grape shot, just more coverage of space. And yes, they're nice versus infantry like that. Goblin Hewers are spectacular at other jobs, like zeroing out a Kadai Destroyer or a Bull Centaur Render unit, and those are pretty elite balance of power units. It's not all about the damage you can do given 10 minutes of battle, it's the damage you can do before you have a Bull Taurus in your China shop, preventing you from doing more damage. The shock value of a massive drop in hit points will break units and thus make the enemy offensive more staggered, giving you more time for high sustain units to help you win that fight. So it's not the kind of artillery you would use solo, but what artillery is. I'm sorry, besides Necrofet's Colossi. I mean, you wouldn't bring 15 cannon units. It's cool, but it's way too fragile if the enemy manages to get close. So you have to have some kind of balance. The Goblin Hewer is there as a massive short-term damage dealer. Everything I've described just make it help deal more. Dwarfs have always had good artillery, and cannons are still strong, but Goblin Hewers set a new standard in being able to bury the enemy's most precious units in the next 30 seconds. Use it, abuse it, use the Slayers once the ammo is used up, make the enemy pay for every oath fulfilled. What are you waiting for? Take care, and have fun showing that if one axe isn't enough against a horde, a few hundred sailing through the air are considerably more effective in the short term.